your boy El checking and look we are here in Santiago Chile it's my first time in this country so look if you haven't been out here we're gonna get to know it together Chile has always been on my list but I haven't got around to it so this time we're gonna see everything that got to offer from the vibe the views the food don't go anywhere you do not want to miss this let's get it we out here we are in Plaza de Armas Plaza de Armas which is kind of like the city uh, city center this is where a lot of people come do shopping walk around get food it's markets all around the zone. We'll walk around, show you everything that's going on out here. Um, a lot of historical buildings. If I find any history, I do not know. I do not know. I ain't gonna come in here and act like I know what's going on out here. If I find anything interesting, I'll put it down below. We're gonna take a quick walk around here. We're gonna see what's up. All right, guys, so we're gonna get right into it. Start walking around this place. Like I said, it's a lot of, um, this is mainly like a park area where you sit down, you chill out. There's a lot of history over here. So I'm gonna take you over to some of these buildings and we're gonna get into it. But we're just gonna check out the vibe. Just for reference, today is Saturday. I think I can say I was uh, kind of impressed by this. How nice it is. So you wanna be super careful when it comes to Chile or Santiago, I should say, or Chile. We're gonna get more into that a little later, but you wanna be super careful at the certain time that you come to Santiago. And of course, if any of you guys follow me, you know I always do a starter kit. And this is no different. We're gonna give you all the tips and tricks that you need. But it's reversed to the US. Anybody in the US, and I think even England, it's reversed. So you wanna make sure that you come in here during your winter. So that's November, December, January, February, the best time to visit Santiago. Cause you get this beautiful weather. Today it's about 80 degrees. Right now it's about, uh, gotta be around afternoon time. And Chile is really cold during the rest of the year. So you wanna make sure that you don't screw up and come out here one of the cold months. Cause I think it's cold like nine months and, and hot for like three or maybe less than that. So. All right, let me walk over here. I get back to you guys. Guys, as always, housekeeping rules. Make sure, make sure, make sure that you're walking around with your stuff in your front pockets. Uh, make sure you're keeping your eyes out on everyone. I always tell you guys, it, there are a lot of authentic people, but rule number one, if anybody comes up to you speaking English, nine, and then from here, 99% of the time they want to sell you something. <laughs> so 95% of the time, I, I'll be a little optimistic. But just keep your eyes out on that. So this is the cathedral. And outside of some nice markets. So interesting thing about uh, Chile when I enter here, Chile may be one of the most uh, tourist friendly countries I've been to. So you guys see me in El Salvador before I even enter the country, they even made Latin American countries pay for a visa. I never seen that in my life. I have Brazil, Mexico, like dang these boys grimy but on the other hand chile no visa i don't think for anyone i didn't have to i mean of course unless you're like uh the normal ones that they usually make pay a visa which is africa and some of the uh other countries like that but besides that no visa um and the line was full of colombians uh uh nicaraguans uh, i'm trying to think of the passports i've seen Italians, everybody. I've seen everybody here. So it's a huge tourist destination and they're very tourist friendly. So make sure you put it on your list if you want to come check it out. It's another view of the park. So if you go more down this way, see more shops. I thought this was pretty cool because they got a like Christian based shop in front of the church. Well, I shouldn't say Christian, but religious based shops because I think uh, they practice uh, the Catholics here. So they got a uh, religious based shops right in front of the front of the joint. They got some nice magnets too. Anybody who don't know I'm a magnet collector. I slack it. When I first started traveling, I was slacking. I ain't I ain't stay on it. But now I try to get back on it. Even now sometimes I forget to uh get my magnet game up. But I get there man. Don't worry about me, sweetheart. Don't worry about me. Let's keep it moving. Artwork over there. I'm trying to find the best corner to hit so we could get into it. I guess we're gonna hit the left side. Let's do it. I'm not even the left side type of person. 
It's only that one left-handed person, I think, because they left-handed. They got some type of superpower. I stick with the stick with my right handers. Right hands, right hands matter too. All right, but let's keep it rocking. So guys, as we get into the actual streets, I'm starting to definitely see that uh, European influence and um, the buildings and architecture, how everything looks like. This looks like it could be more like a, a Italy kind of vibe, but the store is kind of just pinned into the buildings. Like no distinct like difference and then over there you can see with the Italy like outside seating the arch walls they definitely get their Italy bag out here like I was saying the Italian outdoor seating vibe Let's see what else we can find over here so guys as you can see Chile has a lot of these long streets where a lot of people set up shop now remember i told you guys about how tourist friendly they are now this is the interesting part guys so chile actually also has like an immigration problem right now so a lot of immigrants come here and they don't leave which is kind of kind of kind of intuitive if you think about them being so tourist friendly because you think they would put stricter uh rules in place to keep people from doing that but I was on the line, I seen people, there's two people in front of me, Colombians. Um, they got Burgundy Passport. So they just, I knew they were Colombian, I seen it. So they just let them in. It wasn't like they uh, checked any documents. She just gave me the passport and let them in. Now, countries that tend to be behind the Darien Passage. So if you guys don't know what the Darien Passage is, uh, it's a passage in Panama where a lot of immigrants go to get to the U.S. Countries that tend to be behind that are more laxed on um, tourist rules. I think it's a lot of U.S. influence. Like, I think a lot of uh, politicians want to keep good standing with, um, with the U.S., so they just put in these rules that, that uh, essentially make countries require visas for certain countries. So right now, if you guys don't know, Mexico is currently like, it's kind of up in the air about making uh, visas mandatory for Colombians, which is going to be like a game changer. Because imagine like they have really good uh, diplomatic connection with Colombia. Now you're telling them they need a visa. And these Latin American countries like to keep each other back. That's why I was real surprised about the El Salvador thing. But when politics get into play, you know, they get a little tricky. So. Like I was saying, right now they want to uh, make uh, Colombians get a visa to enter because look, if you could get into Mexico, you're that much closer to, you know, getting into the U.S. Some people, and trust me, again, I, I gotta say this is like 25% of people may want to do this, but the majority of people just want to visit Mexico, you know? I know plenty of people who, who are very nervous about this visa because it's another country that they can't go to, which is really not cool. But like I was saying, anyway, long story short, I guess Chile doesn't have that much pressure being put on them by the U.S. because it's so further down. It's like the furthest you could go. So a lot of people come here because they tend to make a little bit more like, let's say I met people from DR here, uh, Cuba, Venezuela for sure, because it's a little easier to immigrate here than other countries. But yeah, guys, I'm talking a lot. <laughs> That's my little history lesson for the day. I gotta. I gotta put the candy in the medicine, uh, keep you guys informed. But yeah, we're gonna keep walking around these markets. And the reason why I brought up immigration is because a lot of people in Chile are afraid that um, like the culture is being watered down. Like a lot of these street vendors tend to not be from, let me see if I can find one, tend not to be from uh, Chile. So a lot of them might be from like Colombia. Or something, so. Guys, so this area in particular just really reminds me of La Zona Colonial. If you haven't checked that video out, I made one there, it's right in the DR. Very, very cool place to visit. Go check it out. All right, guys, so here goes nothing. We're gonna try this out. It's Mote. Mote, I will see you. So, like I was saying, guys, this is a very interesting drink. Chile is one of the few places you can find it. It's like a dry peach with um, juice and barley. So, like I said, I wasn't too big of a fan of this, but <laughs> when they're home. 
aquí sí estamos. Hola. Hola, ¿me puedes dar uno, uno chiquito? Así. It's going to run you 1,000. I'll put the conversion below. Gracias. Alright guys, so here we got it. It's Mote. We're gonna check this out, see what it's hitting for, see if it's busting busting. Alright, cheers. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see that dry, that dry peach in there. I'm trying to get you guys the best footage I could. Got a little seat here, so we're gonna do it. Alright guys, let's get into it. This is so good guys. I wasn't expecting that. It almost tastes like a peach, a peach Arizona. <laughs> tastes good though. Oh, I need is a little hen dog on this. I'm gonna have to take this back to the crib. All jokes aside, this was some hen dog go crazy. You guys can see that peach in here. I don't know if you're supposed to eat that or just drink it. And they said this is barley. No actually what barley is. I'm gonna get the definition, but hold on, let me let me start up. Alright guys, like I got set up so I can try out whatever this is at the bottom of the barley stuff. So just to comment on the temperature again, it's hot, but it's like it's like a good hot. It ain't too overpowering. You guys can see that. I mean, it's overpowered by the um, by the peach taste, but it goes well. I don't know how to explain it, but it goes well. All right, guys. So before we head out this area, I just want to give you guys a quick look at the other side. So you guys remember I went left first. I bust the bust the Yui. Now I'm busting back to the uh, right side, and more to, more or less it's kind of the same vibe again. If you see my video in La Zona Colonial, it's almost scary how done cool these areas look, but at the same time. Um, at the same time, it's way more vendors out here, so it's kind of vibe down here. It's more of a marketplace. Also reminds me of a bit of El Salvador, but we're going to head to the next place. Look, so right now we're about to head to this hill uh, called Santa Lucia. Not too far from here, but it got a great view, great vibes. And we're going to see what else is going on out there, so stay tuned. Let's get it. What's up, what's up, what's up, guys? Look, we back and we still out here in Santiago, but I'm in a different neighborhood. Now, look, this joint is only like five minutes down the road, but I had to come check it out. It's called Santa Lucia Hill. Santa Lucia Hill. And it has some of the best views and best scenery out here in Santiago. So, we're going to walk this place. I don't know how to get up here. I don't know how we're going to get to the spot I want to get to, but we're going to figure it out. Y'all with me? Y'all with me? Then be with me then. Come on, let's do it. Let's go. So the cab dropped me off over here. Now, I know it's up the hill, but I'm sure it has a couple of, couple of different entrances. So I'm gonna go this way and just hope that it's the right way. Now the background looks kind of like that yellow. So my guess is it gotta be around here, but um, can't stop it, can't stop it, can't stop it. Who knows, so we wanna just walk and try to get to it. Weather's really getting uh getting nicer and nicer. Gotta be around 82, 83 right now. And my guess is it's up here because I see a lot of people going up here, so let's get into it. Alright guys, so I believe the only thing you need to do to get in here is you need to sign in. Let me make sure. Yeah, it's a little book that you sign in over here, but it should be free. It's a nice little uh, picture of the flag. Alright guys, so yeah, all you gotta do is sign in there. And then, what we wanna go is up there. 
but this hill it, it, it goes way higher than this this is just um i think this is called uh fuente napoleon or or something like that i'll put the name below you guys not be butchering stuff but yeah this is just one of the areas i don't know if i'm gonna go all the way up i'm gonna see how uh how the climb is but if you here go all the way up don't be like oh check in let's go it's a nice staircase yeah i want to get some of this for the grizzly for the grizzly you know what i'm saying gotta keep the grizzly litty right, whew. so cool that you got that mix of modern and og so this hill supposedly is a uh, I want to say a 15 or 16 million year old. Wow, look how nice that is. All right, guys. So I'm gonna give you guys a quick little tour over here. Walk through. I'm gonna just check this spot out real quick. So I already know this is the photo op area. This is where you want. Oh, look. Oh, they go right there. So I said the Fuente. I said Fuente Napoleon. It's Fuente and Neptuno. My bad, y'all. I know I'll be, I'll be dropping the ball on the names. Look at that photo op. And like I said, it's way more up there. I'm going to give you guys my best shot to try to make it up there a little bit. But honestly, food is calling, so. I'm gonna have to take care of that first. But we're gonna head up there and see. So it says, the magic fountain. Throw a coin, close your eyes, and make a wish. Make a wish foundation, international Chile. So this is make a wish foundation who, uh, I guess is a sponsor or a donor, probably for the upkeep. And if you throw a coin in here, you know how the legend goes, it'll come true. But I'm sure it goes to some type of a uh, charity. This is a spot I would say you want to at least carve out an hour or two. It's not like super, super, uh, pack with things to do but you can see right here why they call it uh so Fuente is the fountain and it goes Neptune right there I think Neptune is the god of the seas or something oh yeah so guys this hill goes all the way up. Keep going, keep going, it's pretty high. It's more stuff, it's like castles and stuff up there. You can kind of see it from here. It's a castle right there. It's more stuff up there and the view only gets better. I'm gonna cut it here for this scene cause like I said, I gotta get something in me. Your boy is hungry. So I'm gonna head back down, head to the last place. Go and check out this marketplace. You're gonna, you're gonna see what it's about, let's get it. As I found some, some sandia. Let me see if I got see if I got this. I'm cutting that thing up right there. Let me see if I got a little sand. Yo, one piece for him. Hola. Hola. Quería la que tú quieras. Muchas gracias. Que te vaya muy bien. Try to get one of them things. Alright, but we off here for it. <laughs> What's up guys, if you like the shirt you see me wearing in this video or any of my other videos, check out the description box below to get yours.